welcome back to the show. Does David Suzuki dig your garden? Well, we're going to find out right now. Lindsay Coulter is joining us from the David Suzuki Foundation with a special guest star. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Gloves on all the time. It's like holding the Stanley it Cup. It really is. Uh, but there's a David Suzuki. <laughs> but I'm fondling David Suzuki instead. Takes my garden contest going on right now. Lindsay's going to tell us all about it. How are you? Good, thank you. Good. So tell us about David Suzuki oh. digs my garden. So a lot of uh, people still use pesticides. About 30% of Canadian households still use pesticides. So you That's think that it's much higher than I would have guessed. Yeah, it's pretty high. And 75% of folks in Canada have a yard or garden. Okay. So it can be still pretty uh, wide spread that folks still use the traditional stuff. So I'm going to show you two different uh, remedies that we can do in your garden. One's called companion planting. Okay, I've heard of this before. And what's the concept? So you want to attract beneficial insects and it's all about maintaining a balance and repel those that are undesirable or unwanted in your garden. Okay, let's talk about basil and yes. what he does. Yep, so also tasty but also helps uh, when it's planted near things like tomatoes, onions, asparagus and carrots, so a lot of crops will repair, uh, repel sorry, flies and, and mosquitoes even, and attract bees. Why are bee bees are good? Because they're pollinating. Bees are good for pollinating, yeah, yeah all the other food crops and, and uh, flowers that you might have in your garden Very too. nice. Marjoram is another popular uh, herb that you can keep in your garden. And when planted near uh, apple trees, it's going to repel um, all sorts of insects. It's actually sort of a double duty beneficial to many species. And nice, plants. and it attracts bees as well. And chives. Ah, chives. So we're going to do an onion recipe you shortly and chives, chives garlic. No, just, oh, I broke it. I'm sorry. <laughs> now you have to eat it. But they're good for repelling, which is not surprising considering they're an onion. <laughs> Again, apples and, and carrots, and uh, it's similar to a garlic planted at the base of apple trees will do the same effect. And then something a little bit different. Um, is a yarrow plant. This so is so pretty. We have native yarrow. species. There's some sh uh, showier ones. And this is going to do something a little bit different. It's going to attract ladybugs, which are beneficial insects Very good. that will then eat the aphids that a lot of people um, have problems with. talk about being yeah, pest in pest quantities. Now, so. I said off the top of the show, and Mike corrected me that I shouldn't say that we're making natural pesticides. But turns pesticide. out, so as turns per out, usual, I was right. You were right. Uh, maybe it, you can explain what we're making right now, what sure. we should call it. So in essence, if you are trying to kill something and, and you know, you're, you've already tried doing the natural balance of, of plants and you've used your compost and you've tried everything. You've paid and, your children um, to pick the aphids off and squish them, which right, is what I do. That's slugs like a lot of people do. You can try yeah. some of these uh, natural uh, pesticides, but essentially if they're killing anything, Bug they still are They're still are called pesticide, pesticides, but these are natural. I mean, the idea that people still put pesticides uh, chemical laden pesticides sure. on food that they're about to put on their table is a little it seems bizarre. archaic. And we've got about 50 uh, active ingredients that go into chemicals and pesticides in Canada that are banned elsewhere in other countries. Oh, I didn't know that. That's insane. So another reason to, you know, as far as regulation that maybe try and make your own. Do okay, your best. it's Naturally been very, based. very fragrant in yes. here because of these little fellas. <laughs> wow. um, onions can repel lots of things. Uh, like what me, are we using? Fiona, like Fiona, Lindsay. Uh, I was uh, kind enough to chop up that uh, onion crying. so we wouldn't cry uh, earlier today. Uh, we've got a cup of just a yellow regular onion you can uh, put in the blender there. And I'll get Mike to measure out a cup of water. Sure. And so we're gonna this is for aphids this. or is this for... This is going to be an aphid repellent that okay. we're going to put eventually in a spray bottle. You can use oh, a full cup. So oh, sorry. You're on to that the we're half cup. There. there we go. There we go. And we're going to blend this up to make a, sort of a mash and a mixture. If you want to press uh, blend, that would be great. Blender. You can use a salad as well as an onion. If you're in a fraternity as well, getting someone to drink this. Looks good. Good times. And uh, we're going to put it in our, our garden spray bottle. So of course, and don't mistake this for your margarita mix. That wow. would be gross. That really does look <laughs> like a lime bad. margarita. It totally does. <laughs> Not Hello, refreshing. good times. And definitely label, um, you know, any of these sort of homemade kitchen uh, pesticides oh, that you might I don't make. know if we blended um, it enough. I think, yeah, we got it. Well, we, we could always uh, use a little bit more water, but you want to strain out the chunks of onion. Oh, okay. You can oh, let this sit for a while and let all the, the flavors mellow into that. And then and you just spray it on the, the affected plants? Yes. And yeah, you'll use a spritz uh, spray. You can even start with water. So just basic water. Uh, first time around, we'll take the aphids, the adults, right off, and then the second time around, we'll catch any that you missed. Does two this days later. kind of onion mixture keep away any? Like people have problems with fruit flies at this time of year. Can are there concoctions like this that are natural to use for in-home things? Yeah, we've got some um, a video that we're going to do right away. Is making compost tea is one on the David Suzuki Foundation delicious. website. So that's for indoor and outdoor plants, and to keep that compost balance. Compost tea, what's that? Okay, let's talk about David Suzuki digging your garden. You guys have a contest on. 
second annual garden uh, contest. It's a photo contest, so you can submit it whether you have a balcony garden or you've got a community garden, and you can try to get, uh, you know, opt for the gnome to come out to your garden as well. He's really? He's traveling all this summer. So the gnome and, comes um, to visit? Yes, that's right. Nobody gets to keep the gnome, though? I don't know if he'll be auctioned off in the end. David's quite fond of him, so he might be have a hard time to pry him out of his hands. Very cool. So if you <laughs> want to send in pictures of your garden, you can find out whether David Suzuki does dig your garden. And I believe David Suzuki is coming on our show on Wednesday. He sure is, yeah. Uh, Wednesday or Thursday, I can't remember. He'll be, on this, he'll anyway, be on this week anyway. You can check out the David Suzuki uh, website, which is davidsuzuki.org, to find out all the information. Because every time Lindsay comes on the show, people ask how to make this stuff. Just go to the David Suzuki website, and all the information is there. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lindsay. Thanks Always a pleasure. Much. On Wednesday. Wednesday, I'm actually going to carry David Suzuki mm -hmm. into you? the studio using right, the You have to wear the gloves, though. <laughs> yeah, I think so. He could probably carry me. He's very strong. <laughs> he is. We're going right? to take a break, we and we're going to come back with lots more.